Las Vegas-ben és mi is a párban. A Mutsumi Gatsvenyi, a Dolya Plaster szerint debütált a Dinkától a Cserepdoria Dolce Gyerekbe, a Kassel Transi. Welcome you to the welcome you to the um, events, the second cluster of events, uh, which are taking place uh, in the frame of uh, Transit Days uh, 2012, um, uh, a series of events uh, dedicated to the celebration of the 25th anniversary of uh, Transit House in Cluj. Uh, tonight uh, uh, we will uh, start this night with a uh, discussion. Uh, a presentation of a research made by, uh, well, it's a work in progress, uh, is it not? Uh, by Mihai Lukács, who is a theater, director, theater maker, and, uh, and a researcher. And uh, he will present his research on the uh, Yiddish theater scene, um, uh, a Jewish theater scene in, Romani in Romania. Uh, a little bit before and uh, after the Holocaust. A mai beszélgetés és előadás egyik fő meghívottja az Mihály Lukács, aki színházi rendező, színház csinál ember és a kutató, és egy folyamatban levő kutatásáról fog beszámolni, amely a Holocaust utáni a romániai a, a jidés színház, színfoszgalomból, mozgalomról, intézményekről, folyamatokról szól. Ázia, Vaszpontú, Moszlafi, Mihály Lukács, Kálevédi, Uresie, Tiltamékkal, Jere Csizor, Csecsek a Torsi, Oszanek az Inter, Ocsecse Tárekkal, Jön a Kruzebet Dárés, Pakman Mincelez, Deszpre, a Teatrú Jédés, Ebrejeszk, a Diromaniás, Csinak Teatrára, Ebrejeszk, a Lupa, a Munkucina Intesi, Lupa, Lupa Holokázat, az baj. A másik vendégünk, akivel beszélgetni fog Mihály, az Tibori Szabó Zoltán, egyetemi professzor, történész, akit hát nem kell semmit bemutatni, de talán ő segíthet a leginkább bennünket abba, hogy kontextusba helyezze, általános történelmi kontextusba helyezze, mint azt, amit Mihály majd el fog mondani erről nagyon specifikus témáról. Uh, our uh, other uh, distinguished guest is uh, Tibori Szabó Zoltán, a uh, university professor and historian, who is uh, probably uh, uh, the most qualified person to uh, offer us a kind of uh, uh, more broad general context about uh, the particular problem Mihai uh, uh, will be presenting. She is a child who Mária Tibori Szabó Szoltán, Káré, Sztorics, a professzor Universitár, Káré Oszanov fel a Presupum, Oszállás, ez a Kontext Májlár, a prezentálja a Mihály, a Kontext Sztorik Májlár. So this is an event in the frame of Transit 25, and after the presentation and discussion, we will also have a film screening, the film Free Fall by Peter Forgage. So please stay with us and let's have a good night together. Dec după după prezentare și după discuție, o să prezentăm și filmul lui Peter Forgage. A Cadere Libera, un film făcut în 96, rămâneți cu noi și vizionați cu noi filmul. A beszélgetés és a bemutató, a kutatási bemutató és a beszélgetés után levetítjük Fogács Péter Görvény az Örmény című filmjét. Maradjatok velünk és Brucva ezt majd a film és átadom a szót. Thank you so much for your introduction. Uh, as it was mentioned, I will not repeat.
is everything in Romania and Hungarian and in English because I was asked to, to deliver this just in English. So uh, this will be the language of my lecture. Uh, I was asked by uh, Mr. Lukas to give a certain kind of introduction and to draw up a general context for uh, for his presentation about uh, the Holocaust, generally speaking, but uh, especially the Holocaust in Transylvania. Now, uh, of course, uh, um, I am uh, representing for myself and for my students usually the Holocaust as a political system, a political system which uh, decided at a certain level to consider some parts, some groups of the members of its own society as enemies uh, of the majority and uh, <coughs> adopted those to separate them from the rest of the society, to uh, close them in uh, different uh, camps and ghettos, and then to deport them in cattle train and to uh, surround uh, them to a foreign power, to a foreign country, in order to be killed. The question is if such a political system should or could uh, appear again. Uh, and uh, I have to tell you very honestly that uh, I never ever found a, a negative answer to this question. So we are uh, not very sure that such a system, such a political system, cannot appear again. I am not sure that uh, I myself would not, or it's impossible to be the victim of such a political system, or any of you, or any other group of people, I don't know, by which characteristics uh, uh, separated and killed. Now, about the Holocaust in Transylvania, I will treat this uh, aspect in two parts, the northern part of Transylvania and the southern part of Transylvania, because it was split in 1914 two parts, and during the Holocaust it was belonging to different countries. Um, Northern Transylvania uh, was a Transylvanian, generally speaking, belonging to the uh, Austrian-Hungarian uh, Empire from the, from the end of the 19th century uh, until uh, uh, 1920. Uh, uh, solved the question of emancipation of the Jews very early. Romania didn't solve this question, so it was a big difference between the way Romania uh, handled the Jewish question by denying the emancipation of the Jews uh, for a very long time, until 1923, in fact, when the new constitution, uh, in the new constitution, Romania was forced, uh, in, uh, according to the a treaty of uh, a peace from Saint-Germain on Lille in France to uh, give, without any kind of uh, uh, other commentaries, uh, citizenship to the Jewish people living in Romania. Now, uh, Hungary solved this question already uh, after, uh, uh, after uh, the unification or the so-called compromise between Hungary and Austria and the formation of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, the first law adopted, or one of the first laws adopted, was the Jewish Emancipation Law. It was a very short law. It says it has only two paragraphs. The first paragraph said that the Jews from now on are equal citizens uh, with the other uh, citizens of the country. And the second paragraph was a whole kind of contrary legal provision uh, is uh, emulated from now on. Uh, and Hungary was an exception in Europe as well because in, uh, after the, uh, they adopted the emancipation law in, uh, eight, in 1895, the Hungarian parliament adopted another special law, the so-called 
reception law. Uh, in fact, this law uh, equalized the Israeli religion with the other religions that, are, that were spread in the country, the Roman Catholic, the so-called historical religions, the Roman Catholic, the Reformed religion, uh, the Lutheranian religion, and the Calvinist religion. So Israel's religion was equal with these uh, religions, financed, uh, accepted and financed by the state until, uh, until uh, they uh, changed their mind after the First World War. Now, belonging to Romania, Transylvania, belonging to Romania after World War I, uh, according to the Peace Treaty of Trianon, uh, uh, Transylvania, a, a big part of the so-called Partium, the Partium Hungaricum, as was uh, uh, denominated during the Middle Age, uh, the Banat, the region of Arad, uh, uh, the Marmarosh, uh, which are not trans the historical Transylvania, uh, were belonging, uh, uh, starting with uh, June 1920, to Romania. There was a growing, uh, after the adoption of the new constitution and the emancipation of the Jews in Romania, where in 1924, Romania changed the uh, its mind and uh, started to uh, uh, claim back uh, uh, the citizenship, I mean, to, re to redraw the citizenship from the some categories of the Jews. And starting with, with 1925, between 1925 and 1930, there were all kinds of uh, anti Semitic uh, actions. Uh, uh, it was a uh, uh, record in the, the different attacks of the, the so-called uh, Iron Guard or Legion of uh, Archangel Michael uh, against the Jewish communities and there, were, there was this uh, uh, Professor Nastase called it the, 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 the traveling pogrom uh, which was uh, a train coming from Bucharest with students and heading to Oradea uh, students belonging to the Iron Guard that destroyed in the uh, Oradea synagogues and shops. Uh, they came uh, to Cuyabin, to Cluj, and uh, uh, the destruction was uh, huge in uh, all these cities. So uh, Jews were, uh, uh, were afraid uh, of these uh, actions and, and were terrified by these actions. In uh, 1934, the first anti-Semitic law in Romania was adopted, the numerous clauses law, saying that 80% of the employees and 50% uh, of the members of the company uh, uh, boards uh, have to be the Romanian ethnics. And uh, in uh, 1938, another uh, uh, decree was adopted withdrawing the citizenship of several hundreds of thousands of uh, Jews in Romania and the decree of 1940, also August 1940, also the Statute of the Jews uh, actually made uh, the majority of the Jews living in Romania second uh, uh, rank citizens of the country. Uh, it was a difficult period for both countries because Romania and Hungary had uh, discussions already by the middle of the 1930s about uh, uh, the territory of Transylvania. Hungary was claiming uh, the different parts of this territory. Romania was not uh, willing to offer too much, but uh, uh, something uh, they want to offer. So uh, after uh, ceding West Romania to, to the uh, Soviet Union and uh, Southern Dobrogea to Bulgaria. Uh, they uh, had a, a meeting with uh, representatives of the Hungarian government in Turnus Severin. They had some negotiations and these negotiations actually failed. They, they failed. And uh, the two governments uh, uh, requested uh, uh, so-called international uh, arbitrary decision uh, 
uh, and this arbitrary decision uh, was uh, made by uh, Germany and Italy in Vienna in 19, uh, in 1940, August 13. And uh, the decision uh, said that the so-called Northern Transylvanian part was uh, restituted to Hungary and the Southern Transylvanian part remained, uh, of course, with uh, Romania. Now, uh, the decision was uh, accepted and implemented by both parties uh, without uh, fights or uh, any other kind of uh, actions. And, uh, and of course, this, uh, you see this uh, map with the region that was uh, returned to Hungary and uh, the southern Transylvanian part remained to Romania. This is the northern Transylvanian part as it was during the Hungarian uh, uh, authority. Uh, it was uh, divided in uh, counties uh, and uh, it took as a total of 43,000, around 43,000 square kilometers and uh, on which uh, uh, 2.5 million, roughly 2.5 million people lived. Out of this population in northern Transylvania, more than uh, 150,000 were uh, of Israel's faith, so Jewish uh, by religion, according to the to the census of 1941, and uh, around 14, 15,000 were Christians or who uh, left the uh, Israeli faith for different Christian denominations, um, but were later considered Jews under the Hungarian legislation, the Hungarian racial legislation. So the total number of people of Jewish origin who had to confront uh, and who were affected by the, the Hungarian anti-Jewish legislation was around uh, 164, 65,000. Now uh, you can see here on this map uh, the most important centers for Jews in northern Transylvania lived in a great number. The greatest uh, was Oratera uh, uh, with uh, around uh, 35, 40,000 uh, uh, Jews, then Siget, Siget Marmazzi, then uh, Santo Mare, and then Cluj. Uh, so uh, uh, these were the most important centers, and the other were uh, smaller, uh, Danish, uh, uh, Baya Marish, and so on and so forth, Um I usually uh, used to, to uh, categorize uh, the Holocaust in Northern Transylvania as being uh, uh, produced in, in four different uh, stages uh, or four different uh, phases. Uh, the first uh, is that of abuses and expansions, uh, uh, deportations from different parts of Northern Transylvania. The second is the phase of the Holocaust by Buritz. And the third is the extermination by forced labor, hunger and disease uh, in this uh, military working service of the, in the Hungarian military of the Jewish man. And the fourth phase, the phase of the gas chambers, uh, cremation and the slave labor in different Nazi uh, force work uh, camps. Um, as you will see, uh, if I mentioned that Romania and Hungary were very different uh, regarding uh, the, the emancipation of the Jews, now you will see that the two countries acted in a similar way during the first phases of the Holocaust. The first deportations uh, took, took place from the so-called Sacred Land, so uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, territory or, or uh, the, the territory of, uh, of uh, these uh, settler settlements uh, like Mirkura, uh, Chuki, Orgenia, Borsek uh, and other, uh, these were the very first acts uh, immediately 
after the Hungarian uh, army occupied Northern Transylvania after the Second Vienna Award. Uh, the military, this, these actions were carried out by the Hungarian military. The, the first three phases of the Holocaust in Northern Transylvania were carried out by the Hungarian military. Uh, so this was the very first acts of the Holocaust in Hungary. Uh, the Jews from Chitra, uh, uh, from Yerperchu, from uh, from Georgien, from Borsek, uh, from uh, from uh, uh, Tulges, from other uh, uh, Jewish uh, settlements uh, on the secular land uh, on this uh, region were uh, rounded up and uh, closed in uh, mostly in the police uh, facilities, and then forced to cross the border to Romania. Of course, these people uh, uh, several weeks uh, uh, earlier were living in Romania. They didn't want to cross the border to Romania because they knew that in Romania already the statute of the Jews is in enacted and they didn't want to cross the border to Romania. They knew exactly the situation, that the anti-Jewish anti drive from Romania. So uh, they uh, uh, wanted to come back. Uh, the, the Hungarian military uh, opened the fire against them. The Romanian border guards uh, 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 shot uh, them from the other side, so it was a diff difficult situation. The survivors, this took several weeks uh, uh, of uh, fightings in the Carpathian mountains. After several, a couple of weeks, uh, they were rounded up again, uh, transported back to the Chitra, uh, to the Mirkraj prison. Uh, then they were forced to buy their own train tickets. They were trained and transported to Kirsch. As well, this was a Hungarian settlement in uh, uh, Transcarpathia, called so the place in, in Ukraine is called Yashinia. It has a sort of a Romanian name. Uh, nobody knows the Romanian name, but it has, believe me, the, the, the Romanian the name, name is uh, of the, of the uh, city is Frasin. Frasin. Uh, uh, so uh, this, uh, 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 according to the, to the prosecutor of the, of the uh, uh, People's Tribunal uh, of Cluj in 1946, around uh, 2,200 uh, uh, casualties, uh, so 200 uh, Jews died during this section on from the secular land. Uh, your, the action was organized and carried out by the military. Uh, certain colonel, Alan Elheda, who was the uh, commander of the military administration. The military administration was installed in northern Transylvania immediately after the arrival of the Hungarian authorities until from October, from September to November to December uh, 1940. But it was uh, actually uh, uh, later, only by the end of January, when the civil administration uh, took uh, uh, the power from the military. Uh, the survivors uh, uh, transported to, to Yasinia or Kurosh, Mazur, or Flasin were forced uh, during the winter, during December, to cross the Carpathians and to go to uh, Galicia which was at that time territory of the Soviet Union it, yeah, before uh, Germany attacked the, uh, the Soviet Union in 1941. Uh, now, uh, 21 people disappeared from this one, so the total number of victims was approximately 200 only from the secular uh, region. Uh, other several thousand Jews were abusively and forcibly uh, resettled from uh, different towns and uh, regions of northern Transylvania to other Transylvanian settlements. These deportations, as I mentioned, were organized by the Hungarian military and civil authorities as well, uh, uh, who took over the power in uh, January 1941 and uh, continued for two years, in 1941 and 1942, uh, and affected uh, actually the entire territory of uh, northern Transylvania. 
even before Hungary's entry in uh, the war against the Soviet Union uh, on June 27, 1941, uh, this national center of uh, alien uh, uh, control authority increased uh, dramatically its activity and, uh, and they were uh, uh, drawing up plans uh, how to reset the, the so-called alien Jews in the Soviet territory in Galicia. Now, uh, the pretext for this expulsion, the expulsions were, was the fact that they want to remove the infiltrated Polish and uh, Russian Jews uh, uh, who infiltrated in Hungary and to, to ex uh, expel them uh, uh, to the Soviet territories to go back uh, from where they came. Uh, the actions were carried out by the CAO, this uh, agency for the control of uh, the aliens uh, in Hungary, and the registration and action uh, had the approval of the highest Hungarian officials, including the Ministry of Interior, the Prime Minister, and uh, the Regent Horty himself. Uh, yeah, more than 20,000 Jews were deported from Hungary to without uh, uh, Yasinia and the Tartar Pass, this was the highest point uh, of the Carpathians. Uh, uh, the other side was already the Soviet Union, to Galicia, uh, to Colomea and Kamenets Podors. The Hungarians were deporting to Podolia the, at Kamenets Podors. The Romanians, in the meantime, in the same period of time were deported to Podolia to Mogilev Podors. Both countries were deporting the, the aim of all both countries was to deport the Jews over the Dniester River in Podolia or in Transnistria, no matter how or where, uh, because the Dniester was a geographic, very good geographic border and the Dniester could be defended in an easier way with two machine guns. Uh, the, the number of bridges was extremely uh, few bridges uh, crossing the Nesta River, so, so, uh, so the bridges uh, uh, could uh, be easily uh, uh, controlled and uh, a few uh, military patrols uh, 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 walking uh, along the river were uh, trying to protect uh, uh, the territories from the Jews uh, not to come uh, not to come back to, to Hungary or to Romania. So they acted in the same way. Over uh, 20, uh, over 16,000 of these uh, Jews deported, 20,000, over 20,000 deported, over uh, 16,000 were, uh, uh, were killed, were uh, shot, uh, were machine gunned in, uh, in, uh, in, into mass graves uh, near Kamenets Podors, the majority of them, but also in other, in other spots. This, uh, this action was carried out by uh, uh, an SS uh, uh, battalion, uh, the Einsatzgruppe C, which was uh, uh, under the command of uh, uh, an SS uh, the general, General Friedrich August Jäcker. He was hanged in Latvia in 1946. Uh, others were mutilated, others were, sh were shot in the Nester River. We have uh, survivors' uh, 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 testimonies saying that the, the, the bodies were floating days after they, uh, uh, on the Nesca River, the body of the dead people, were killed by other means. Others ended up in the ghettos, uh, awful ghettos of uh, Stanislav, of, of uh, Holodenka, of Natvorna, and were killed uh, or starved uh, there from uh, in addition of different, or different other diseases. The most affected uh, Northern Transylvania settlements and Jewish communities were Kretschmi, I mentioned there, so you see Kretschmi, 
It's important for me that all these settlements have a, have a Jewish name, have a Yiddish name. So it's important to remember from time to time that they, they have each uh, one of uh, them a, Jewish, uh, a Yiddish name as well. So I put uh, first the Hungarian uh, uh, denomination of the, uh, of the settlement because the Hungarian was the official language of the time. And if somebody uh, like uh, Mr. Lukács tries to uh, research this uh, uh, period of time, he will have to know the Hungarian official name because the, the documents in the archives are in this language and with these names. But I mentioned also the Romanian and, and the Yiddish uh, names of these settlements. Uh, 400 people from Krajunesh uh, were in train. This is the first deportation by train in 1941. Uh, in a single day from, uh, uh, from Krajunesh to Lazeshina, through Lazeshina, uh, a locality which is now in uh, Ukraine, to come in as photos. The majority were mur murdered there. From Sigat to Marnassie, uh, 450 people were deported in July 1941. The majority were murdered there. Uh, from the same, from uh, uh, Satumare, 1, 000, over 1,000 people, and from Absharesus, today is in Ukraine, uh, uh, over 800 people that at that, that time belonged to uh, uh, Marnos. Uh, and so on and so forth. You see the uh, settlements, I will not uh, uh, enter into more uh, details. These deportations in the second phase of the Holocaust in Northern Transylvania, uh, which were ordered by Budapest and carried out by the Hungarian army, generated a total of four to five thousand victims. Unfortunately, we don't know the names of these, these victims. And of course, this was the first uh, big-scale mass murder in, uh, during the, the Holocaust in Hungary, it's, which can be expressed only by five, uh, five uh, figures, by the uh, five uh, figure uh, number. Uh, the third phase was the extermination by forced labor uh, of the man, of the Jewish man, in uh, the summer of 1942, uh, the Jewish man from Northern Transylvania for called uh, for the labor service within the Hungarian army, and around 15,000 Northern Transylvania Jewish labor servicemen were sent uh, first to Hungarian labor camps, then to um, labor camps uh, in the front line in Ukraine. There, due to uh, the treatments, the uh, poor food, and uh, the conditions, the diseases, the mass murders, and uh, more injuries, a great number, number of them uh, died, never returned home. And by the end of the war, others were taken prisoners of, uh, of the Soviet army. We have uh, some uh, uh, examples also, people from Cluj who ended up in uh, not in the Gulag, but in the Gupvi system, which uh, of camps, which was the which was the camps of the criminals arrested by the Ministry of Interior of the Soviet Union. At least two thirds of Northern Transylvanian uh, uh, Jewish labor service and perish during this phase of the Holocaust, and there were also massacres like this in Doroshic, where uh, uh, field hospital was set on fire. There were typhoid uh, uh, suffering, typhoid uh, fever suffering uh, patients, and uh, they were want to get rid of them, and they set uh, uh, the hospital on fire. And uh, out of uh, 670 uh, inmates, uh, almost 500 were killed during that night. Uh, if uh, somebody tried to escape, they were machine gunned by Hungarian soldiers. The fourth uh, phase of the Holocaust in Northern Transylvania uh, started after uh, uh, Germany occupied uh, Hungary. Now, the Soviet 
occupation of uh, Hungary is a very tricky historian, historical uh, uh, act. On March 18, 1944, uh, uh, Hitler invited uh, uh, the region. Three 
speak from my number, press, press. The I L S it means reservat, uh, uh, secret, uh, confidential decree, not published in the official paper of the time, detailing the procedures for the roundup, the concentration, the ghettoization, the deportation of the Jews. Even Eichmann was surprised by the support he received from the new government and the speed of, uh, of the deportation. Hungarian authorities were very eager to start and rapidly execute the mass deportation program. The robbery of the Jewish federalists and the deportation of Jews organized uh, uh, in a very efficient and professional uh, manner uh, actually took only six weeks in trans or less than six weeks, three weeks in trans in order to Transylvania to deport uh, uh, almost uh, 140,000 uh, Jews to Auschwitz Birkenau. Uh, on April 27, it was a decree, it was a tricky decree of the Minister of the Public Supply. It says that by May 1, all the Jews should uh, Submit their data, their personal data, to the local mayor's office in order to obtain the new food allocation uh, documents. Because without these documents, they uh, they uh, they will starve probably. So these uh, documents, this list of uh, uh, delivered by the Jews, because everybody was very eager to to be conscripted list of, uh, of uh, food supply. Uh, this uh, list that is based as a basic inventory for the roundup and ghettoization of the Jews uh, a few, a couple of weeks later. Uh, two, two secret conferences were uh, set up in Transylvania, one in uh, Satumare, uh, the other in Turgumuresh, a difference of two days. And uh, they uh, delimited two operational deportation zones. Uh, the first was uh, the northeast of Hungary. In this, this was the Jandarle district number eight. In this, entered two uh, counties from northern Transylvania, Maros and Ung. Ung is a county that is split today on, in three parts. One is in Hungary, a part of in Romania, and another part in Ukraine. And uh, the second zone, the Jandarre district number nine, including the country's uh, districts, Abikor, Cluj, uh, Satumare, Saraj, and uh, Solomon, the uh, And uh, the Jandarre dis district number 10, still in the second zone of deportation, which encompassed the several counties, Chik, uh, Chuk, Tres, Aune, Muresh, Kurdash, and uh, so the ghettoization legislation was the decree number 1910 uh, from 1944. It was signed on April 26 by the Minister of Interior, the Hungarian Minister of Interior, uh, Jarosz. These are uh, the maps with the deportation zone uh, 8, 9, and 10, and the county zone I mentioned. And the main ghettos in Northern Transylvania are listed here. Uh, there were uh, uh, 14 ghettos, and uh, I will not, uh, I will not uh, uh, enumerate them because uh, I have to pass the microphone to Mr. Lukacs. And the departure dates of the trains from Northern Transylvania, and uh, with. Uh, with uh, blue, the number of, uh, of Jews deported, uh, transported by these trains are listed here. The first deportation train started on uh, May 16 from uh, Siget to and uh, the bulk of the Jewish population was, was uh, uh, transported, was uh, sent to Auschwitz, uh, by June 10, with uh, uh, in June 9 from Cluj uh, started the last train, 
And on June 27, it was the last, last train, uh, start, uh, starting from uh, Oradea. But uh, on, this, on that train, they round up uh, the remaining Jews who were in high or uh, uh, brought here, so brought here from, uh, from uh, the western part of Bihor country, which is today in Hungary. Uh, the total number of deported persons uh, around uh, 132,000 people. Of course, we don't know. We have signs and information about other deportation trains. So, and another transport, a special transport leaving for Switzerland, uh, the so-called Kastner transport, transporting 388 people from Cluj to Budapest, not to Auschwitz. Uh, the total number of Jews deported from Northern Transylvania was at least uh, 135,000. The maximum number of Transylvanian or other Transylvanian survivors of the Holocaust was around 35, 40,000. And the minimum number of Northern Transylvanian victims in all of the four phases of the Holocaust was somewhere between uh, 125 and 130,000. Now, a uh, few words about the southern Transylvanian uh, uh, situation. Around uh, uh, 42 individuals were considered Jews under the racial legislation in uh, southern Transylvania. They were, the men were enrolled in labor camps uh, uh, for labor service. Uh, and in Pukota, Filiash, Piatra Olds, Foxhan, Yorok, and so on and so forth. Very hard conditions of working, especially the, especially Pukota was, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Kizarta Shanovica in, uh, in the Banat world were very blamed. Uh, and they deported as well. Uh, the Romanian authorities from uh, Timisara, from Arad, were deportations from uh, Ternabe, from Prashov, from, from Sigishara, uh, to Vapnyarka, to Olgopol, to uh, Gosorovo, to Mostovoi, uh, uh, some Jews from southern Transylvania who changed their religion to a Christian religion, but not to the Romanian Orthodox, but to so let's say German, Mediterranean, the Romanian authorities were very mad why they don't uh, pass to the Romanian Orthodox religion. And that was the reason they were deported to Transnistria. Others were deported because they were social democrats or sympathizing with the communist uh, uh, idea and so on and so forth. So there were also plans in uh, southern Transylvania to uh, deport the southern Transylvanian Jews to uh, occupied Poland, to Berzek. It was not to Auschwitz, but to Berzek. The trains already were uh, uh, scheduled. The trains were prepared on, in September 1942. In the last moment, Antonescu changed uh, his mind. Uh, I listed here the names of three uh, people who acted in this direction to save the Jews of uh, Southern Transylvania. Uh, then we have the expulsion of Jews from Sigishwara by the Romanian gendarmerie. Uh, they were expelled to Northern Transylvania, to uh, the secular, some, some secular settlements, uh, or the Heus and so on, and they ended up in the, in the ghetto of in May 1944, and they arrived in Auschwitz uh, as well. Uh, Dieter Schleser, uh, the German writer, described uh, uh, very vividly and uh, exactly this uh, deportation. The executions in this uh, uh, in this uh, 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 fi final final phase of the whole carried out by the Hungarian army uh, uh, had also to be mentioned uh, the attack of September 19, 1944 in Sarmash, uh, uh, 126 victims uh, killed in one night and buried in a common uh, uh, spot uh, 
uh, also in uh, Rudus, 17 victims, in Arad, 6 victims, and so on and so on. And so forth. The total number of lost lives in uh, southern Transylvania during the Holocaust between 1 and 2,000. So 40,000 Jews in southern Transylvania survived the Holocaust. Now, the conclusion. Four-fifths of the uh, northern Transylvanian Jews representing two-thirds of the whole Transylvanian jewelry perished in the Holocaust. And uh, now, to make a connection with the uh, speech that uh, will be delivered by Mr. Lukács. The survivors of the Holocaust of Transylvania returned to their uh, uh, homeland uh, in 1945, and uh, of course they were very marked by the tragic events, and uh, some of them wrote, uh, uh, put on paper their, uh, their memories about the camps and, uh, and uh, about uh, these tragic events of the uh, Transylvania of the Transylvanian Holocaust. Uh, some uh, uh, put their memories uh, in a documentary record uh, uh, form, and the others use uh, literary uh, means or uh, uh, tools uh, to immortalize this catastrophe. I choose for you and translate it today, roughly for you, a small uh, passage from one of the first books to memorize to memorialize the, the Holocaust in Northern Transylvania, uh, written by a lawyer uh, called Otto Cornish. Uh, the title of the book is, uh, was Fush, which means smoke, and was published by Minerva in Puj in 1945. Uh, I will read you this. Uh, it's about uh, the feeling of Cornish when he was liberated in Dörkau. Uh, it was called the Durham camp was called the Old Crematorium. Can, you can imagine. Uh, and uh, he describes his own feelings. The boys laughed. I am not laughing alone. What is what is this unpleasant, unpleasant feeling inside me? I close my eyes and hold my fellow prisoners tightly. It seems to me that I am standing again beside the Auschwitz tracks. On that rainy morning a year ago, I can see my mother standing in a line, moving to the left, in her black overcoat. I can see her brave face as she is nodding towards me. I can feel the warmth of my father's hand. hands, and as we are saying goodbye, when our hands part, for him to move to the left and for me to move to the right, and I can still see the immense cloud of smoke in the sky, the smoke that it, as, it spread, that as it spreads across the entire horizon about the concentration camp, as it spreads above, across our entire past and future to cast its dark shadow upon our entire life. This is in 1945. Ibra Kertis wrote text with such a uh, profoundness about the Holocaust, but 30 years later, that the smoke will be, will spread across our entire past and future to cast its dark shadow upon our entire life. And uh, of course, another very early uh, literary, is still not a drama, but a literary uh, piece, is uh, the preface that the journalist, the journalist Béla Schultz wrote uh, uh, to the memoir of his fellow journalist uh, Béla Patona uh, from uh, Oradea, entitled, he, he had a, a memoir entitled Tara the Béla Oradea in the Storm, that appeared in 1946 in Oradea. Uh, 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 Béla thanked the author on behalf of the Hungarian literature journalism and, quotation, on behalf of the dead and those living for the memory of the dead, for, memori for memorializing 
in his book, The Tragedy. Now, short quotation, sets a memorial to all those who were denied even a mass grave, but who will forever float across the European sky as low-lying clouds until the tapestry of heaven splits and the dumb's day comes. As the author of the preface states, there is nothing left of Varad, of Oradea, the, es, the, the easy city of Istvan the western city of uh, Andreadi, the city of our youth, ambitions, love, joy and happiness. It is all gone. So this is another uh, text in which the clouds, the masculine, who were even uh, denied even a mass grave, but who will forever float across the European sky as low-lying clouds. Now, you wonder why a young man, Mihai Lukács, is starting to research such a question. They already mentioned because these clouds will float always on the European sky. There is no world. There is no mercy for us. We have to confront this history. In order that I am coming back to the beginning, you know, in order to avoid such a political system, we are cannot be sure that such a political system cannot appear again. Thank you for your kind attention. First of all, I want to thank to Professor Tiboli for uh, giving us uh, this uh, important um, presentation of the hard data that is so relevant in, uh, in relation to Transylvanian Holocaust because we are here. Um, I will talk about something else. I will uh, move somehow the discussion uh, to the issue of representation of the Holocaust and how, uh, oh, it's already here, thanks. Um, and how um, the Holocaust survivors uh, thought about rebuilding a Jewish culture and art after the Holocaust. Uh, so um, there are all these reflections uh, that existed. Um, I think I will see it actually. Just to check how this works. Yeah, it's like this. Uh, and um, I'm, um, I'm glad to be, to be back here at Transit House, uh, a place uh, that I can say that I grew up with uh, since the 90s. Uh, I even directed my first, my very first uh, theater performance uh, right here. Um, like, 18 years ago, um, and uh, I have an image from that, so it was here. Um, and we used to call this place the synagogue, and I think this name is still used in Cluj. Um, I will not insist on how, uh, how important... Can you hear me? Okay, uh, I will not insist on how important this place uh, is uh, for many of us, uh, and um, I, I just wish for many happy returns. But um, what I will talk about tonight uh, is uh, this certain local history, uh, but also a reflection on our condition and options as independent artists nowadays. And I think that is a very important issue, uh, issue that was brought uh, that I'm talking about tonight. This uh, presentation will uh, focus mainly on how uh, IKUF uh, theater, or I'll call it in Romanian Kuf, um, has left an Yiddish uh, cultural movement that focused on the Holocaust trauma and has put uh, the artistic foundation to what would become 
the Jewish State Theater in 1948. Uh, in a, um, oh, okay, so this is a program from from one of their shows. Um, so it's a uh, it's short-lived existence left a legacy that had long-term effects on the intricate transformation of the Jewish theater in Romania. First of all, one of the key issues regarding Holocaust and theater is the question of representation. How is it possible, if it is possible, to represent the unthinkable, and what are its effects? Even in uh, 2022, the question of representation of the Holocaust is still debated by practitioners, by scholars, by theoreticians, as a controversial matter with many implications. Of, um, and I uh, use some quotes here, of where the limits between entertainment and historical accuracy can be put if artists can freely blur the line between fact and art. This paper, my paper, not this one, uh, looks uh, into the historical debate on how the traumatic history affected and influenced our production of Jewish theater in Romania starting with 1944, how it affected its repertoire, the practice, and how the dramatic changes of Jewish communities in Romania created a local artistic movement and a specific way to work with catastrophic memory in a historical moment that was perceived at its true importance and led to new institutions and new aesthetics that are still at work today, in my opinion. The need for an artistic form in order to understand and cope with recent, with recent historical trauma for Jewish artists in Romania did not follow Adorno's famous statement from 1949 on the barbarism of writing poetry after Auschwitz. The idea of uh, de-estheticizing politics, uh, culture, and art followed the fear of a st uh, style of destruction, of uh, a fear uh, of giving uh, aesthetic meaning to the unthinkable. Yet art creates an unreality effect in a way that is not alienating or desensitizing. At best, it also provides something of, of a safe house for emotion and empathy. The tears we shed are an acknowledgement and not an exploitation of the past. As Geoffrey Hartman defends the function of the Holocaust-based art and the first uh, Ikuf performances directly addressed a communitarian primary trauma in a way that was necessary for the art makers also. Josip Berkovich, a theater critic, director and performer, wrote in January 1943 a presentation for a conference and uh, it was called Faces and Masks from All the Northern Jewish Theater. This manuscript talks about the Jewish theater identified from the start with the Jewish act as a sick person, but not dead yet, while the words are flowers brought to the bed of the forgotten sufferer. This is uh, January 1943 in Bucharest. Discussing the history of Jewish theater in Romania, the legacy of uh, Abraham Goldfaden, Berkovich ends his lecture with a strong message against solitude. For him, while he was on stage, he never felt alone because in some theater performances, he says, the spectator cannot separate the living from the dead on stage. Scared, you decipher the face lines, the facial bones, covered in a green and yellow stage light, all mixed in a hallucinatory kaleidoscope. While uh, reading this document that was not published yet, I remember uh, the reaction of a Holocaust survivor from Transnistria watching a dramatization of his autobiographical novel performed at the Jewish uh, State Theater in Bucharest. He was able to truly see his dead parents on stage as they were, as he knew them. Identifying with the director who is giving stage direction, 
Josip Berkovich wants more pathos from the actors. He says, your acting should burn the theater. I want the theater in flames. Mentioning the end of the first act from the book, Berkovich sees the actor crossing the stage as an opener of the heavens and earth's gates, embracing all the pain in the world through the lines in Yiddish. A light has died. A new light needs to be lit. Regarding the title of this presentation, uh, the period after August 1944 is described in the essential volume 100 uh, Years of Jewish Theatre in Romania by Israel Berkovich as under the same roof but beneath a clear sky. This book. Israel Berkovich played a crucial role in the development of the Jewish Theatre after 1944. He was part of the quintessentially Kuf initiative in Botoshan, which developed the very first performance, Nacht Talk or Night Day, as a reflection on the Holocaust a few months before August 1944, and worked as the literary secretary of the Jewish State Theater in Bucharest from 1955 to 1982. Israel Berkovich. The metaphor of the roof is used in relation to a permanent location and building for Jewish theater. He reflects on the institutionalization of the Jewish state theater and how the previous initiatives contributed to this national recognition of the cultural value of the Jewish state. Berkovich calls the post-1944 development a new history of the Jewish theater that breaks with the past but at the same time man maintains a strong connection to local histories, buildings, and locations. Author, authors like uh, Itzi Rubin and uh, S.C. Christian mention this strong material linked to a theatrical history that connects to the present to, through certain spaces filled with meaning. Christian writes in the preface uh, of the Jewish theater from Yasha Short History from 1947. Uh, Rubin left his heart there, around the green tree garden, even nowadays. That was the pilgrimage destination for Jewish actors from America to see, like Rubin, the boards on which their ancestors moved. Uh, for them to see the garden, where Goldfather, like the Galician troubadour Velos Barger, set their poetic and anti Hasidic pamphlets on stage, both in tailcoats and top hats in front of the working proletariat from the weeping streets and crooked little houses of the Yash Ghetto. I feel sorry for Rubin for his delayed nostalgia, but I understand him, because I too, when I happen to be in Yash, near the rundown fences of the green tree, I stop and look carefully at the glorious stage which steals my mind like rubies and takes me away, ready to mist my eyes for its past as well as for our past, of those back then, both gone forever. Here is a drawing by Maxi of Goldfather. This is not an isolated thought. In Poland, for example, Krzysztof uh, Lenartowicz, I'm not sure that I pronounced it correctly, analyzed how Holocaust museums function for the visitors in terms of representation and education nowadays, how architecture interacts with emotions, intellects, and bodies of those who are in a certain location that is filled with historical meaning that is connected to the viewer's previous knowledge. He says the physical structure shapes behaviors and is perceived through senses. Architecture, as an essentially abstract and non-representative art, is unable to render historical images. What it can do, however, is to evoke them in the viewer's imagination based on associations and the knowledge of history. Those spaces that uh, remind a visitor of a certain tragic history can, can produce uh, through a spiraling identity 
communication, reactions that are similar or identical to the lived experience of the witnesses of the real events that the person in that particular space might only heard or of uh, or made part of their own past. For Israel Berkovich, the metaphor of the theater building is connected to the first roof of Godfather's theater from Otoshan. Even if the very first uh, Yiddish theater was established in Yash, in an open air location, the, the very first roof, Yiddish roof, uh, was, was, this, uh, was this theater where the first performance from 1944 in Yiddish, Night Day, took place. So, Godfather performed here in 1876, and uh, in uh, 1944, Night Day took place months before the August, what was called the August Liberation, because a few towns from Moldova were not under Romanian and German army control. This uh, particular situation encouraged artists to organize in Botoshan a theater troupe under the umbrella of the Ikut Cultural Association, established those days in Botoshan. The troupe was founded by professionals and amateur theater makers. Israel Berkovich, a young theater enthusiast from Botoshan, took part in developing this first performance that had just a few representations with a full house. The format of the performance is significant also because the following performances about the Holocaust follow the concept. The two parts, the night and the day, were following the recent dark past and the enthusiasm for a bright future. This performance included songs sung uh, until yesterday by singers and public from the labor camps and songs that were inspired by the new political situation and represented a historical moment or with this as modest a symbolic theatrical engagement, the threat of the Jewish theater tradition in Romania was reenacted in new conditions, as Berkovich said. The theme of the night is connected uh, to the Holocaust in two crucial instances. of works that are based on direct Holocaust experiences. For example, Elie Wiesel's uh, Memoirs, Night, and Ludovic uh, Bruchstein's play, The Night Shift, the very first performance of the Jewish State Theater from August 1948, that created a story based on the idea of the night work done in the Auschwitz crematorium by Sonderkommando prisoners and in the socialist factory by both workers and Holocaust survivors. Starting with 1944, a new perspective on the Jewish theater and the idea of a state-supported institution emerged in a new context. The following months after August 44, the Jewish theater was not able to create large events. The surviving theater makers were returning from camps and forced labor, were scattered in various locations all over Romania. They were lacking communications and basic means to create art collectives. But even at that time, Jewish artists organized public performance events containing mainly poems and folk songs, fragments from classical Jewish literature, new songs and literary works that were reflecting the recent suffering and hopes for a better future. In Bucharest, in Bucharest, the Kuf Association managed to receive legal recognition and started to organize libraries, lectures, the Kuf Blatter magazine, and a theatrical committee that planned to establish a new Jewish art theater. In 1945 already, the Kuf Theater was functioning as an ensemble of professional actors and young enthusiasts were trained to become actors, all under the supervision of the director and actor Jakob Mazdor. After only six, uh, six months of existence, the self-described major cultural factor in the life of Jewelry in Romania, Ikuf Theater organized a long tour in 1946 
with their, its two performances, each lab and then their, their uh, musical. Made in Transylvania and Moldova, performing in 27 cities, including Bruges, their successful tour was organized together with the Jewish Democratic Committee, and its local organization was uh, organizations and was met with a warm welcome for the authentic ambassadors of arts and culture. The self-presentation of the good theater at the time is relevant. They see themselves as these messengers of uh, progressive Yiddish art and culture in a working pro uh, pro uh, progress process of cultural and artistic perfection under the guidance of the great artist Yakov Mazda. In a similar self-presentation, of the Transylvanian leg of the tour, a detail of the specificity of the Brashov audience emphasizes the impact of Ichlev performance. This is the poster. Ichlev means I live. Okay, so I quote. Over the still unhealed wounds of the Jewish population of Transylvania that suffer so much, the performances of the Ikuf Theater spread a soothing palm and constitute an incentive in the recovery work that this much dry population submits to. The audience's reaction to the lifting of the curtain of the Ikhlev show on which the slogan Am Israel High is printed was downright shocking. The plan for the future was even greater at that time. They were rehearsing a Goloni comedy from Fine, and they were preparing new performances, the sources by Goldfaden, Stempeniu by Alech, uh, Alechem, uh, in a new dramatization by Mansdor, but also a new surprise review, and they were keeping a strong connection to the traditional Jewish theater and the well-known authors, except for Ichleb. There are a few signs of a new realist perspective, actually, in terms of dramaturgy, but a strong connection to traditional audiences that have to be seduced uh, took its toll. Returning to Bucharest from the tour, Ikuf Theater wanted to be a crowd pleaser and kept a strong connection with their audiences, who were also supporting financially their existence. We have no doubt that the return of the Ikuf Theater will be greeted with the same warmth by the Jewish population of Bucharest, who contributed so much to the establishment and maintenance of this art and culture settlement. As well as the shows in Transylvania and Moldova, the first Jewish performances after the war in various locations in Europe have had a tremendous impact on the spectators, as well as on actors on stage. Jan Schwarz researched some of the first performances in Poland after the war, and he describes uh, the electric atmosphere in the Yiddish theaters. Spectators and actors looking at each other for minutes and unable to stop crying without any words. They were just doing this form of uh, connection. In 1946, Jakob Mansdorf published a report after the first year of the Good Theater, an account of its activities. In his uh, own style, Mansdorf outbids the role of the small uh, theater that, the artist, that he artistically manages and creates a continuity to the recent uh, traumatic past. If we say that our young group became known to the popular Jewish masses in Romania, it would, it would perhaps uh, be quite modestly said, because our theater brought joy, pride, and at the same time comfort to the Jewish population after the tragic events that happened. In this report, Mansdorf mainly emphasizes the role of the first official Ikuf performance Ikhlev, a game changer in the existing theatrical offer of the time. We play the great sufferings that our people went through during this tragic period of oppression. And fascist play, and from which the Jewish viewer left with the pride of being a Jew, feeling the strength of his ancestry that makes him resist and survive 
all the great trials. They show brought comfort and encouragement in the people's further struggle against the forces of darkness for human rights. The program of the performance for the 1945-1946 season gives some significant clues in positioning the Hitler performance in the specific moment of its creation. Moshe Lutz, the president of the Ecoupe Association, writes the introduction as nothing less than a political and artistic program. For the new initiative and the combative style of Ecoupe is set into action. After reclaiming Godfather's legacy, Lutz attacks uh, the existing Jewish companies, which at that time were very limited and performing abilities for following their own path, in his opinion. After the Goldfaden uh, uh, repertoire, the Jewish stage was invaded by a place of a vulgar nature that the Yiddish language so classically qualifies as Schum Theater. The public country there made great fun of this place without content, without taste, and without any trace of literary sense. Against such direction, the Jewish theater supposedly developed to become a strong tool in educating the masses with examples such as uh, the Vilna Troupe, uh, the Jakob, Jakob uh, Sternberg's theater from the 30s uh, in Bucharest, uh, from Moni Schwarz's uh, Yiddish uh, Kunst Theater in New York, and uh, of course the Yiddish state theaters from the Soviet Union. The historical moment of 1945 is considered without any reservation to be a more important one for opening a Yiddish theater than 70 years ago, when Goldfaden established his theater in Yash. The opening of Jewish cultural institutions with two performances directly addressing the Holocaust three years apart, besides Theater, the future Jewish uh, State Theater opened its first season in uh, August uh, 1948 uh, with a night shift. And uh, this, uh, this process has a deeper meaning that which uh, Lex explains it clearly. Today, however, when the important communities in France, Germany, Hungary, and Czechoslovakia are nothing but pale shadows when the millions of Jews in Poland, Lithuania, with their cultural tradition and with their great press, are publishing institutions with their multiple schools that were our reservoir of Yiddish culture and culture in Yiddish no longer exist. When the compact Jewish population of Ukraine, the only country where Yiddish was recognized as an official language by the state authority, also fell almost entirely to the fascist murderers of people, it falls on us, the Jews of Romania, the most compact Jewish community in Europe, apart from the Soviet Union, the great moral duty towards the small groups of Jews saved from other countries, as well as towards the future generations, to create cultural institutions, to form a center of culture and art for the Jewish masses throughout Europe. So this was the plan, somehow. Following the same argumentative line structure, it's so Shapira explains in connection to the performance he played that the historical moment must be seized and not in a chaotic way. Shapira rejects a, a return to Shun theater or the vulgar theater that the pre-war Jews were used to and are, not, are now nostalgic about as the good old days that are gone forever. He contests uh, the actor's argument that they would like to change the theatrical style, but the public demands such performances, otherwise they would not come to the theater. Even, even if uh, the Romanian Yiddish theater was considered backwards compared to other Jewish theater companies, the models are the same uh, Hirschweiss theater, the Vilna Troupe, uh, Weichert's uh, Jung theater from Poland, uh, Boris uh, Schwartz's uh, Kunst Theater that I already mentioned, uh, Piat from Paris. Those performances that tour Romania were met with great interest and enthusiasm and inspired local theater makers such as 
Jacob uh, Strandberg to save the oppressed Jewish art and to create a cultural center with local elements in Romania. Vilna took a uh, tour in Romania in the 30s and it had a very strong influence uh, also on the Romanian theater because they, they came with a totally different style of acting and uh, constructing the performance. Um, this uh, theatrical history and trajectory changed dramatically when the war like a black cloud darkened the Jewish cycle, as Vito uh, Chandra said. Shapira gives an account of the Holocaust in an extremely personal manner. In the brutal performance that exposes the bestiality of an extermination camp, a camp from the Ukrainian territory in uh, Italy, but in contrast, focuses on the camp resistance and the fight of the Jewish and Ukrainian partisans outside the camp. Shapira performs the sadistic uh, Gestapo boss, Johann von Kaido. His account of the Holocaust can be read also through the effort of creating a difficult and emotional role in 1945. He said, millions of Jewish souls were destroyed by Hitler's peace cultural treasure created by generation through labor and unimaginable hardships were reduced to ashes. What is left in Poland of the three and a half million Jews, of which 400,000 were in Warsaw alone? There are hardly 100,000 left, and in Warsaw at most 5,000. Of the more than 200 Jewish theater that existed, there are very few left in Europe today. Of the countless Jewish theater troops in Poland, only Jonas Turkov and uh, Diana Munzfeld remain. Like two brothers of the past ages, they stormed the cities, spreading the Jewish word and gather, gathering around them at concerts, the marking Polish jewelry. The second part of his article changes the tone and becomes optimistic, restoring his trust in humanity and the great future. This is not the time to cry over the ruins of European Jewry. The future belongs only to the one who fights and builds a new life. On the Jews of Romania falls the great responsibility and priceless duty to save the Jewish culture, for them and for the Jewry of the whole of Europe. The perspective of positioning themselves as Jewish artists in a larger international context with global responsibilities is a particularity of Ikuf Ensemble, an international group of theater makers that are fully conscious of their mission towards the Jewish communities that they perform for, as well as towards other fellow artists and Holocaust survivors. Shapira is aware of the fact that their resources are extremely limited for succeeding, and the work that they have to do can only be collected. His last point expresses nevertheless the trust in an optimistic humanist approach that will become the main form of artistic and political consciousness for Jewish artists in Romania for the following years. I quote, the Jewish theater must gather around itself all the forces for the new and victorious ideas of our time, for the formation of heroic and fighting consciousness that feel the emotions and attitudes of a free world. Concerning the repertoire, even if the rest of the performances are based on classical Jewish plays, uh, Maslow gives them a twist. Even the classical character, Tevye is a model survivor who speaks to the present, he says. Tevye was symbolized by the mighty oak, whose roots are deeply rooted in the Mother Earth and which does not let itself be bent by the heavy storms that descend upon it. The fate dealt heavy blows to Tevye, but his robust optimism strengthens his spine to bend by suffering and he moves towards for the heroes forward with faith in a better tomorrow. The show which was performed at Barashev received enthusiastic reviews and the Kuf Art 
Pieper scores a new paper that it was written uh, in these reviews. What the critics uh, appreciate it was not only the new artistic form, but also the educational role that the Eichhoff Theater wanted to play, educating the audiences to enjoy what uh, that moment is called our theater. Judging by the full houses and the warm reaction of, of the audiences, what was missing at the time in the cultural environment was the specific approach of the old theater, such as the theatrical ensemble of a high artistic level, as it was called uh, in, uh, in these reviews. The successful performance is attributed mainly uh, to Mansdorf, perceived as a visionary director, actor, and manager, but also to his dedicated team, the creator of a warm and suitable music floods, the stage design, Perahim and Lemos, the poet Jakob Friedman, the actors, Tesnar, uh, Horowitz, Laszlo, Linsler, uh, Shapira, and so on. Um, one critic, uh, Sanin, writes that what he saw on stage was not just a performance, but a moment of sharing all the drama of a person, the drama of the Jew Tevye. While Nazdor, who performed Tevye, was not just an amazing performer, but the Jew himself, who knows how to receive with such great spirit all the strikes of the faith. Mansdorf connected, uh, connected the performance to the, rest, the recent sufferings of the audience and produced a strong reaction. Mr. Mansdorf opened the book of Millennial Jewish Daily to one of those wonderful pages which really reveal the human condition of the eternal university in the Jew, but who, under the threadbare and patched coat, carries everywhere with him a warm heart, a charming understanding of destiny. An important place in the construction of the conflict in this particular performance was the scene of the failed pogrom. The local authorities played a Ukrainian presence led by the press priests uh, to enter Tevye's yard in order to start a riot against the Jewish community. But they are convinced that Tevye was an innocent man, so they do not put into practice what they have intended. In an interview from January 1946, Mansdorf explains why he used music in his specific performance, an unusual choice at the time for an Alejand performance in Romania. Because with the help of music, the deep idea of this work stands out more even. The beauty of nature, for which Tevye has such adoration, acquires more value through the music and poetry of the songs. The music emphasizes the conflict, emphasizing the seriousness at the right time. Mansdor perceived the role of music in performing the story, and the effects that he wanted to achieve were not accessible to acting. The artist's effort cannot create an accessible atmosphere that the music infuses. Giving an example of a scene and the usage of music in building the atmosphere and transmitting the message, Mazdan opens the door to his creative process, a rare occasion, considering also the lack of documents and testimonies regarding his activity in Romania. Holden, a standing by the window with her eyes fixed on the distance, where her lover is suffering, when asked where he is, answers with a single word, sitting. And then the silence of the two women, overwhelmed by the tragedy of the situation, is deepened by the subtle sounds of music, the melody of the Russian song of prisoners of the Siberian taiga. Nevertheless, the usage of music in a certain way is a political act, and Nestor uses this occasion to attack the local entertainment business. He said, the role of music is of little value and its purpose is trivial when it reverberates in the theater for the momentary entertainment of the spectators. Our music has the mission of a diver who penetrates to the depths of the human soul, gathering the nuances of feelings to present, to 
principles of the Dioritica School of San Sarsky, whose student I had the honor to count myself. When asked about uh, the general failure to create a permanent Jewish theater in Bucharest with no upcoming results in sight, Master explained that the effort did not follow a realistic line, but he had maintained his trust in the audience. Even if he was surprised that the Yiddish language was not well known in Bucharest, he admits that the audience reacted extremely well to the Yiddish performances on stage. While a year before, in another interview, Master complained that he could not find the Jewish actors to join his company and he had put four actors outside of Bucharest. In 1946, he had an active ensemble, and when he, the reporter asked the usual question about the future plans, he joked that he planned to focus on his children, showing the ensemble. At the same time, he claimed that he did not know the local Jewish organizations and cultural venues very well, and they offered him constant surprises. He says, I might even say that it's a disappointment. It is about the connection of Jewish organizations and institutions to the theater. I haven't encountered this in any other country. I don't understand why these Jewish culture centers keep all the flaws. For masters, the old plays, the old plays have a clear role of bringing the audience to the performances because they already know them by heart. And to give them new content, that brings new political ideas, a new updated aesthetic, and a new style of acting. Even what he calls uh, the Kleinkunst form is employed in showing the tragic disappearance of a whole world. Like in the show based on Peretz uh, Eidegger 9, the almost complete extinction of Jewish life in Poland. Regarding the performance based on Goldfaden's writing, Mansdorf explains his approach in a very direct way. We will try to retain all the primitiveness of Godfather, yet the show will be filtered through a light and smiling irony. If we succeed in realizing the colorful and joyful show we are projecting, it would certainly be a great achievement for our young ensemble that grows and develops artistically, artistically from one performance to another. One can already notice traces of an ensemble that has a certain specific physiognomy. But uh, his enthusiasm has its source in going in front of the Jewish spectators with performances that they enjoy and they immediately react to tragic or cheerful stories that talk to their own condition. The desire show took place in the anticipated surprise function. Master performed Goldfaden's Sorceress in drag. He sang, danced, he performed full of life in a show that, as an unknown uh, reviewer wrote, makes you laugh, a healthy laugh. Forgetting for a few hours the day in turmoil in Bucharest, they dance in India, or other big problems. Master and uh, Master and the Hack, or other Master and Male Hack, makes us laugh with tears when he shows us the Baba Yaga. For other critics, sorcerers proved that Ikuf understood its mission and offered to the audiences an accessible type of theater, a positive repression of our everyday reality. It was not lacking artistry or content, a popular show which deserves to be seen even by the most demanding aesthetic. Even if the performance had no big ideas, political issues, or serious matters, it managed to serve its purpose. Uh, and I quote uh, from, uh, from another uh, review, does anyone protest? No. When Master manages to give us such a witch as Baba Yakma, it meant that he himself is a wizard. Maintaining a political and aesthetic strong position against other Jewish theatrical initiatives and cultural organizations in Romania, Mansour presented himself in direct connection to the local Jewish community that had simply supported him and his art. The initiative and incessant struggle for existence taken by Ikuf with the material help of a small group in our society keeps our theater alive with great difficulty. 
this duty is fulfilled above all by our audience, whom I am only now getting to know better, and I would like to applaud them with the liveliest appreciation by shouting bravo. The certainty of what the Jewish public wanted was unbreakable. We are sure that we will find in this, in this spectator of ours the same encouragement and love that will enrapture us towards new and richer artistic achievements. Ikuf Theater was noticed by critics since uh, Ichle, which was named the Barcade Play. One, uh, one critic, uh, UV, thinks that what uh, this young artistic ensemble does is more than theater and than art in general. It is a school of cultural and artistic consciousness. Their performances are not seen as bestsellers, even if Lansdorf uh, might uh, suggest otherwise. They do not bring a rush of spectators who want to complete their siesta with a preferably trivial, easy listening song, with a preferably indecent dance. And it doesn't even bring to the theater the average crowd that comes to cry cheaply at a, che uh, at a tear jerking melodrama or laugh out loud at a comedy with situations stitched with rope. What Eco Theatre has to offer in this uh, theatrical new context is nothing less than a substantial and filtered Jewishness with the purest and highest spiritual Europeanism. In the same, uh, the same article, which does not mean aesthetic refinement that is not understood by the audience, but a form of performance that demands frontal, direct contact with the spectator which would mean avoiding literature, as some shows are pejoratively called. Iku is caught in a process of helping the spectators to unlearn to demand what the overacting companies used to put on stage. Those companies, criticized by Mansdorf, were considered in a service of a cheap repertoire, non-cultural, non-aesthetic, and not only once, enemy of artistic and moral common sense. Even if melodrama and midlife performance, middle performance, are considered useful in the preparation of a good art theater, the excess of using that style and promoting non-artistic and trivial plays is not justified by the lack of funds and the usage of the spectator's lower instincts, as they call it. Nevertheless, we understand that when you are not supported by the state or any private institution, you cannot make only major art against the need for daily bread. But uh, UV thinks that there are possibilities to combine both conditions in one repertoire, as Ikuf managed. Their example should be followed by other Jewish companies who have higher responsibilities than their material existence. He says, we expect other talented elements of other troops to understand their duties beyond their bellies, like the Ikuf theater ensemble understands. Nevertheless, the lack of funds and support, as well as conflicts with other Jewish theater companies, led Jakob Mansdorf to abandon, to abandon Ikuf after only two years of intense activity. Most of the ensemble follow him and a new collective was formed under the same name, but with a new team and a limited artistic impact. Mansdor left Romania and his former colleagues lost contact with him. He died uh, in 1955 in Zimbabwe. But uh, here is his grave. But Kuf Theater was remembered as a model company and it influenced the artistic direction of the two big Jewish state theaters established in 1948 and 1949. Um, I, I think I will close here, maybe uh, give just uh, a short uh, 
was taught uh, on, uh, on this period. Uh, so, what, what I was talking about ends in 1947. Um, and uh, there are various transformations afterwards, uh, including uh, the, the project uh, of the Jewish State Theater in Yash, which had a different approach than the Jewish State Theater in Bucharest and so on. Uh, the Jewish State Theater in Yash functioned for only 14 years. Um, the Jewish State Theater in Bucharest um, is still active. It has a permanent company. Um, and uh, these are all effects, these new aesthetics that appear, uh, and new directions, um, are all effects, in, in my opinion, of uh, what Ikuf uh, tried to achieve and failed. So, in a sense, um, besides this uh, conflict between different aesthetics and acting choices, um, uh, which is a conflict with victims, definitely, uh, the most difficult challenge for British theatre makers was how to position them, themselves in a political landscape that changed dramatically and was in uh, continuous transformation after 1944. The Jewish communities were themselves changing rapidly, and the whole situation was radically different from what was perceived a Jew as a Jewish life before the war. Some of the Yiddish artists abandoned their activities and left the country, such as Mondo. And some who remained active in the production of Yiddish culture <coughs> found an equilibrium, embracing the ideas of the Embracing the ideas of optimistic humanism as a political position that they could connect to the darkness of the past and the struggle against fascist regimes. In this sense, the performances produced by Ikuf gave a certain style of approaching difficult topics on stage, filtering the, exi the existing cultural activities through the traumatic experiences of the Holocaust and act accordingly. Even if mostly forgotten by uh, the theater environment or completely erased from the cultural memory. The performative process of representing the Holocaust in Romania still ways to be discovered, and the local uh, archives contain documents that can speak to us today and give a fragmented image of incredible struggles to tell the story of the Holocaust and the years after. Uh, thank you.
and the years after, including 1970, when there is a, also in, a, in Jewish theater, there is a criticism of this period of uh, the socialist uh, realism, of uh, how uh, um, even uh, Benkovich calls them uh, uh, prolet proletkultist uh, sociological performances that he rejects in the 70s. Um, and even this uh, movement towards a, a more traditional type of theater, um, or a return to Goldhagen and the old style, uh, is uh, it's not necessarily um, um, a form of rejection of this um, this type of uh, performances that he did, and as. Uh, as I gave you some examples, they were working with this tradition, with this uh, historical uh, Yiddish theater uh, that they were somehow reclaiming in, in a new in a new way. So um, I think that this conflict that appears a lot in the literature with, uh, between new aesthetics and old aesthetics uh, is not necessarily. Uh, true in their perspective at the time. So um, I, I think I will stop here. So if, if you want to go to class. So thank you. If there are questions, I want to get the check of the book. Feel free to also read it.